Hi guys, um, so I just wanted to make a, I guess, a video on um, something interesting and um, it's to do with really kind of, you know, price action and um, being, and I caution the word em em emotional, right? Because it can have obviously uh, negative uh, connotations to it and, um, uh, but in this context, I don't mean it in, you know, a, a very negative way or anything like that. I just mean it in maybe more of a reactive um, scenario when it comes to price. And it takes a while to really, you know, kind of catch yourself when you do this, right? And I see this pretty much all the time. And, um, and uh, Spank, uh, who says, who said, you know, wow, the pound is sold off hard, uh, OMG. Uh, I'm glad I'm out with those trades and good profits, right? Yeah, because I think it was last week we were, um, and I'm still long on that um, that 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 pound Swiss um, trade as well. But the point is, is is that um, it's all a matter of perspective and really kind of understanding what's what's going on in so far as um, you know the pound, right? So in price action setting off now. Um, you know, on, on the surface, I guess, you know, just looking at it point blank, it looks like, uh, you know, the pound is, is selling off, but we're not driven, you know, in, in the group by, you know, price and what we shouldn't be driven by is price. Yeah. And it again, it does take a while to uh, to really kind of figure this out and kind of catch yourself in, in the moment. So heading down to maybe something like a one hour chart, right? And yes, the pound has moved. It is a fact that the pound has moved, um, you know, for uh, maybe about, what's that, 100 or 200, sorry, and 64 pips in the space of uh, four hours. And when you consider all the other uh, candlesticks, small candlesticks, you know, that it does look like a, a massive move. But, but first of all, if you're, if you uh, or we, I guess uh, I really want to be a buyer of the pound, although the pound is uh, subject to um, it being, uh, well, put it this way, the Bank of England is still on the interest rate hiking cycle. So as long as they're still hiking, to me, it's still, um, the pound is still a buy, only against obviously certain currencies, right? Not against every single currency. But um, if, you know, prices are moving, you know, pulling back, right? Um, a, does it really matter, um, you know, how prices pull back if you're looking at long trades, right? If you're looking at levels in and around, you know, daily demand zones or, you know, capture pain relief zones or stop hunts, does it really matter how prices pull back? And I get it as far as, you know, um, you know, you potentially taking, you know, profit um, and it was a great, you know, profit taking um, you know, you timed it, you know, right, if you timed it at the top, right, not everyone's going to time it at the top, but but in the medium to long term, that's like, that, that's, that's kind of like short term, uh, in many ways, it's a bit of like short term thinking, if you understand, if you have the confidence that the pound may go even, you know, maybe a couple of hundred pips higher, so, you know, prices pull back and they pull back sharply, which provokes an emotional response from traders, um, you know, uh, you know, who, who, pretty much to say, oh, potentially this could be a reversal and, um, uh, you know, that they uh, potentially, you know, should have taken profits or if they did take profits, then they're glad they did, right? But ultimately, this could have been one of those moves, right? This pullback could have been one of those moves where in real time before, you know, uh, we knew that prices, you know, they went higher, that could have been considered the same, you know, severe type drop, yeah? But then, uh, and, you know, prices ended up going higher, right? And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that, that that's going to happen here. I'm not trying to, this is not me trying to predict where price is going to go right now. Um, but, you know, the, 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 one of the points I'm trying to make is, is don't be, try not to be driven by what short price does in the short term if you have a long-term, medium to long-term view on um on 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 price and, and the fundamentals or, or risk sentiment because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day um these things are going to happen in an uptrend you're going to get pullbacks right imagine the same thing happened down here right at some point you know traders would have been going short right here if you consider all of the smaller candles below it traders who are driven by price action would have been like oh my days you know the pound is selling off i'm glad i took profits here 
right? Or wherever you took profits, you took profits there, took profits there, and then, you know, you would have missed out on everything else, yeah? So, again, we know, you know, we have a, you know, the probabilities are on our side as to why we want to be a buyer of the, of the pound and a seller of the Japanese yen, right? And prices are going to pull back, they always will. Um, and to the degree that they pull back, or how they pull back um, shouldn't scare you out of the trade if you understand, um, you know, again, the fundamentals of risk sentiment in the medium to long term. This is this is really the point I'm trying to, to make. And even in this one, right, there would have been, again, another sell-off, right? Another sell-off which would have had traders, you know, saying to themselves, like, glad I took profit, you know, depending on where they got in. And, there's, and again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have taken profit because it's always, you, know, you should really have your profit targets set ahead of time, right? And where you potentially want to take profit. And I'm not saying that you should have held, um, you know, on during all this time if you didn't understand what was going on fundamentally and definitely have, you know, profit targets and take profit along the way. But to the point of, you know, if you were driven out of this trade, if you were scared out of this trade, let's say, you know, you had your long term view and nothing changes, right, fundamentally, but then you have um, a drop like this happen. Yeah, and you're sitting at the computer screen and wondering why this is happening. Yeah, and there's really no narrative. Nothing's really changed fundamentally, risk sentiment-wise. Everything's just as it you know should be, etc. Then why get out of the trade, right? This is where fundamentals and, and understanding, you know, risk sentiment and what really is driving the market as far as value. Um, and is the but is the pound cheap against the uh, is against the Japanese yen? This is where it helps you because a lot of times you can't believe or you know be driven by what you see um, you know with your eyes because the markets are constantly being and I don't, and I don't want to say manipulated but it's it's um, it looks like it's being manipulated um, simply because of. And you would think that if you don't understand how the markets work, but from, for example, a market maker perspective, this is a business model, right? This is actually a business model. This is what market makers and institutional flow and institutions have to do in order to. Um, this is this is this is their business model, right? This is what they do, and so some people might call it manipulation. If you understand what's going on, it's not really manipulation. But the point being is, is that these things are designed. Uh, to scare traders out of you know uh, of their trades, right? Um, and you can see again how how much higher prices went from there. If you don't know what's going on, if you have no idea what's going on fundamentally and resentment wise, and can make certain choices to you know to hold on, then you're going to miss out on you know these these massive you know moves. And again, going back to where we are, um, what has this got to do with uh, you know our trades especially if we're going we're looking to go long you know at certain demand zones right if if prices are coming down sharply that's that's better right we get a, we get a we can potentially get a a pullback in the buy trade sooner right if it if it takes forever to come down then it's going to take a bit longer um but either way regardless of what happens in the to price in the opposite direction to what the way that we're looking to trade if nothing has changed if nothing has changed you're looking on bloomberg you're looking on um you know on 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 financial times or reuters or anything like that and you don't see anything then to me it is what it is and i'm not saying again don't confuse me saying this with um our prices are going to go higher or are going to go lower nobody knows right nobody uh, oh, sorry nobody knows um what price is going to do in the short term um but what's likely to happen in the medium term as long as the british pound is you know continuing to high crates and as well risk sentiment yeah continues to remain um less uh, than it is, I want to say, I want to say less, but maybe you know, coming more towards maybe more risk neutral. Um, then obviously the pound should be a buy um, in in that in that scenario. But again, just as a reiteration, so I'm using the wrong words today. Uh, as to 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 reiterate, I guess um, what I'm really want want to say as well is that um, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell. 
the pound for me again is probably one of the currencies that I am very cautious. It's like a cautious buy, so I'm not putting you know my normal position size on the pound. I explained this um, on I think I did a uh, a, uh, a post on it last week. One second, let me find it. Yep. So here we are, and here was my recent. Um, you know, analysis on the pound on the 25th. And I said, everyone, uh, so here's my most recent thoughts on the pound. In the short term, I think the pound is still a buy. Um, uh, is it the best buy? Uh, I wouldn't put it ahead of the dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the CAD, or even the Australian dollar at the moment. Uh, and that's due to rising, uh, the rising potential for stagflation this year. Of course, stagflation could happen to most, if not all economies, but with the UK, I've been reading some articles recently and their economy could be hit sooner rather than later. Yes, the Bank of England is still on a hiking cycle, which it gives support to the pound, but I'm keeping an eye on continued rising inflation, which can affect, uh, can uh, have, I should, I should have put, the effect of hurting the economy and causing stagflation. So if the rumor starts to indicate that the UK is headed for stagflation, then my bias towards the pound will change. Currently, the pound Swiss has come down to an interesting level, which now looks like a stop hunt setup. The CPR zone I was watching didn't give me an entry. This morning's news, uh, although I focus on pound as a whole, or sorry, GDP as a whole, and less on things like retail sales wasn't great, but it adds to the narrative of a slower consumer spending cost of living due to higher prices, rising inflation, which then brings the stagflation scenario uh, more into focus. Just to reiterate, I, I still think the pound is a buy against the Swiss and the uh, yen at the moment, but my usual position size is going to be reduced. Um, it's going to be reduced. Um, uh, on pound long trades until positive signs of UK economic growth emerge, right? So again, going back to the chart, um, again, the, the, that was from the 25th. So again, from the 25th, prices you know went still went higher. But again, just looking at from this from a daily perspective and and watching my uh, weekly technical analysis video um, for the for the group members, you know, ultimately. You know we do want to we do want prices to pull back into a demand zone and how they pull back into the demand zone um is neither here nor there if that price is you know the price action is not driven by a change in fundamentals right or risk sentiment so you know that's pretty much it but if you want to have again an idea of of, of you know the whole analysis behind the pound yen then uh, just watch the video i put out earlier um in the uh, members trading um, trading video channel yeah but uh but yeah just just be very uh cautious um and be aware i guess of you know of 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 looking at price action as and the meaning of price action because not every single large move yeah that happens in the market is going to be some sort of reversal so and again i know you're learning this uh, spank and everyone else watching this um but this is uh you know part of i guess you know the mentoring right is what i provide and just to maybe to give you a different perspective as to you know what i think is going on so so yeah anyways guys that's pretty much it um and uh, i'll see you in the group